far away. A young karate nerd explores the roots of karate, challenging his mind and body, and sharing his epic discoveries. Jesse Incap is the Karate Nerd in Okinawa. This is Heiwa Dori. It's like an underground shopping area district where they have like the fish market and they sell the traditional uh, lacquerware, the, the bean gata, the texture, the fabrics that they use for all the traditional clothes and all of that. So if you're ever around the main shopping street, the Kokusai Dori, then you should come here and check out the more traditional stuff as well. This is the fish market in Makishi. <laughs> okay, thank you. Ah, So, uh, the pig, there is a, a saying in Okinawa that the only part about the pig that they don't eat is when it screams for his life as they kill it. And as you see here, I mean they eat the face, they eat the, like the, the legs and the, what do you call it? They eat everything. Okay. So if you see any fish that you like, you can actually tell them to bring it upstairs and they'll cook it for you. It's so fresh. So I'm getting a oyster sashimi, super fresh. Look at this, there's 400 yen. Ah, okay, thank you very much. I'm going to go and put some sauce on this puppy, like so. And then a little bit of lemon on top. I'm trying to not get this in my eye. And then now usually I wouldn't use this, but I want to be polite because we're in Japan, right? Hmm. Tastes like it comes like straight out of the ocean. Incredible. Remember those sweet potato cookies I showed you earlier? Here's the actual sweet potato. And look, it's purple on the inside. And that's why when they make stuff out of it, like for example ice cream, it becomes purple. The Okinawan word is Beni Imo. That's the word of the day. Beni Imo. On the weekends, they shut the streets down for traffic so you can walk around and play and enjoy the streets. This is the traditional Okinawan folk dance known as Eisa. Check it out. Check out this humongous rope just behind me. This rope is from the Naha Tug of War, which is uh, basically uh, they divide the city into two parts and then they fight using this rope, just pulling like thousands of people. And this actual rope has been recorded in the Guinness Book of World Records as the biggest rope 
in existence and each year I think it's around October they have this uh, tug of war and um, back in the days a lot of karate masters used to be the officials to judge because sometimes uh, fights would break out uh, you know fist fights uh, as they did the tug of war so for example the founder of Gojuru Miyagi Chojun there exists pictures where he's standing with a stick in the official clothes as a referee for the tug of war pretty cool I'm not gonna lie, Okinawa is fantastic, but the coffee is terrible. Unless you go to this place over here, which is called Coffee Road, a newly opened place where they are coffee nerds to the core. And if you're a connoisseur like me, then you should really check this place out. for tonight's training we're at the supermarket and I just have to show you this right here if you ever come to Okinawa you will see these everywhere they're called bitter melon in English but in the Okinawa language it's called Goya that's why a lot of tourists buy these t-shirts that say 5-8 because that's also pronounced Goya it's like a pun so anyway this bitter melon that you can find everywhere in Okinawa is a superfood according to the Okinawans it, and it's one of the reasons to why they live so long according to them it is super bitter you say nigai in Japanese and you know it's one of those things that you either love or hate but I would say it's an acquired taste the first times I came to Okinawa I hated Goya but now I kind of like it a little bit pretty cool now I'm on my way to Sensei Oshiro Nobuko and her dojo which is just east of Naha she's actually the highest ranked female master in all of Okinawa I've never been to her dojo before but she holds the eighth done and she's almost 70 years young I'm really looking forward to this we just arrived at the dojo of Oshiro Sensei and you can see her right there in the back teaching some kids I love the fact that her dojo has pink signs by the way her husband is actually a ninth dan in another karate style himself but unfortunately he suffered a stroke so he's not active anymore otherwise we could have practiced with him as well Okay, 
これが大半値三個になる。大半値からすべてフィギュアに、うちはこれを利用。え、うん、二、三、後ろのお尻で、まっすぐ。五、六、七、八、九、抜きて。ちょっと OK、力、はい、でこれを伸ばすと、伸ばすとしてもこうなんです、はい、弱い,、はいはい、こうなるとどこ行くと強い、はい、もうこれ先生の私は、もうみんな書いても私は書いてもせん、はい、相手もこっちから力入れるんだって、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、こんな人を取って、こらで、隠しでいいっていうのはここで使ってます。それもこうではない。あはい、こらでそう。後ろでもね、弱いんですよ、はい。しかし、これ、腰で、いいえ、逆に。腰伸ばす、伸ばす、はい、伸ばして、伸ばして、腰入れて、腰入れて。もっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっともっ Awesome training session at the dojo of Oshiro Sensei, the first female sensei to open a dojo in Okinawa, and also the highest ranked female sensei in Okinawa. And man, I learned so much. She had tons of awesome knowledge and wisdom to share with me, both when it comes to the technical execution of karate techniques, different interesting、uh, ways of doing stances and moves, and I could really see how her karate. Historically evolved into modern styles like Shotokan and Wado Ryu, so it was cool to trace the steps back,、uh, which you could say I did when I went there to practice. And another cool thing was that all of the kids in her dojo they had to wear pink belts instead of white belts when they started. And I asked her why, and she said, Because I love pink. I thought that was such a cool answer because I can only imagine the difficulties she had to go through. To become the first female、uh, black belt and open her own dojo and everything, because the roles of men and women in Japanese society are pretty strict and old school. Like, there's a certain way you're supposed to live your life if you're a woman or a man, even today. So,、uh, and she said that, you know, after training, we went to eat some hamburger, which was cool also. And then she told a lot of stories from her own training when she was younger. So, for example, here's what she did. She used to train one hour physical training, and then one hour regular training in the dojo, and then one hour just getting beat up and harassed by the, by the male senpai in her dojo, the seniors. And she, had, she said she had to always outwork the men. She had to do everything better and more. For example, she had the record for most press ups in her dojo, she did 200. And she had that record for like five years. In fact, she had to even out drink the men. And she said she could drink five bottles of wine in a day, plus whiskey, vodka, sake, and everything. So, I mean, what a tough life. And after those three hours of training, she went to Okinawan dance lessons for two hours. Then she came home at 1 a.m. in the night, went to bed. Woke up at 6 a.m. to go to work. And that was her life. That's what shaped her. But of course, she said that she can't teach karate that way today because people would just quit, right? Anyway, guys, there are no excuses. If you want to be the best, you gotta put in the hours. I just thought that was so inspirational. <laughs>